To make this oversized sweater, I'll be using about five skeins of the Big Twist Worsted Weight yarn and a five millimeter crochet hook. To create the sweater, I need to start off with a front and back panel. And my very first step is to create a ribbed band like this one. I'm gonna start off with my slip knot like always. And to create the ribbing, I'm going to chain eight plus one for turning. So here's my eight plus one. And now I'm gonna work back across the row by skipping my first stitch and adding a single crochet into each. Here's my first stitch. I'm gonna add a single crochet into the next stitch from the hook. And here at my very last stitch, I'm gonna chain one and turn. In order to add the ribbing, I'm gonna continue with single crochets into each stitch, but I need to front post stitch for the rest of the rows. So in order to front post stitch, I'm gonna wrap my hook around the post of the stitch. So I'm gonna insert my hook and pop it out. So now the post is resting on the front of my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through and finish my single crochet like normal. And that's your first front post. To show you again, I'm gonna insert my hook into the next stitch and pop it back out so that the post is resting on the front. Yarn over and pull through and finish my single crochet. And I'm gonna do this for the entire row. Here's my seventh stitch. And for my eighth stitch, I'm not gonna wrap around any post. I'm just gonna finish with a regular single crochet. And that's my second row. To show you again, I'm gonna chain one and turn my work. And we're gonna repeat the same thing that we did on the last row. So I'm gonna insert my hook and pop it around the front. and create my first front post. And just work this pattern until the end of the row. And again, for that eighth stitch, I'm just gonna add a regular single crochet. And as you can see here, repeating that front post stitch on every single row creates this pretty bulky ribbed effect. I want this sweater to be pretty oversized and baggy, so I'm aiming to make it around a size men's medium. For my pattern, I'm gonna repeat the ribbing for a total of 90 rows, which is roughly 21 and a half inches long. And just keep in mind that I'll need to create two bands of the ribbing. So now that I have my 90 rows of ribbing completed, it's time to start working on the body panel. 
So here at the very end of my 90th row, I'm going to chain one. And now I'm going to begin to work back across the ribbing piece. Since I've added 90 rows of ribbing, my goal is to add 90 single crochet back along the band. So here in my first stitch, I'm going to add a single crochet. And I'm going to add one single crochet into each row. And for me, the easiest way to do this is to place the single crochets into the open gaps. And finishing up here with my very last stitch, I'm going to chain one and turn. So to start my next row, into the very first stitch, I'm going to slip stitch. And in my next stitch, I'm going to add a half double crochet. And these two stitches are going to repeat until the end of my row. So to show you again, I'm going to slip stitch. I'm going to insert my hook, yarn over and pull up a loop, and with two on the hook I'm going to pull through that same loop. For my next stitch it's going to be that half double, I'm going to yarn over and insert, yarn over and pull up a loop, and with three on the hook yarn over and pull through all three. slip stitch, and a half double, slip stitch, and a half double, and just continue this until the end of the row. And at the end of my row, I'm going to chain one and turn my work. In order to make the front panel, I'll continue to add rows until the piece reaches the bottom of my neck. So for this men's size sweater, I'm going to add a total of 88 rows. And alternating between these two stitches is going to create kind of a cluster pattern. So now I'm back after I've finished 88 rows and I need to start making a decrease for my neckline. In order to create the neckline starting on my 88th row, I found my center stitch and counted out 5 stitches on both sides for a total of 10 stitches at the center. And from this point I'm going to start my rows of decreases for a total of 8 rows which is roughly 2 inches and then I'm going to work normally for another 8 rows. So I'm going to mimic this on the other side and I'm going to show you how I get started. So I'm going to start by attaching my yarn at the corner. Pull up a loop and chain one. And for the start of my row, I'm going to work normally until I get two stitches away from my stitch marker. So I'm going to start my row by slip stitching. And then adding a half double. Slip 
slip stitch again and add another half double. And now that I have two stitches left, I'm gonna add my decrease. I'm gonna yarn over and insert my hook into the front loop of the next stitch. After picking up that first front loop, I'm gonna go into the very next stitch and pick up another front loop. So now I have four on my hook. I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two of those loops. And I should have three left. For three on my hook, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all three. And that's how I do my decrease stitches. So at this point here at the end of my row, I can chain one and turn. Since this row starts at the neckline, I'm gonna begin this row with another decrease. So to start this row, I'm gonna yarn over and insert my hook into that front loop of the first stitch. And now I'm gonna go into the very next stitch and pick up another front loop. And with these four on my hook, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through two. Yarn over and pull through three. And as you can see, it's starting to add that decrease to my rows. And now I can work like normal for the rest of the row. So for my next stitch, it's gonna be another half double. And then a slip stitch. A half double. And then a slip stitch. And since the row is gonna end on the outside of your panel, you don't need to end with a decrease. And back here again at the end of my row, I'm gonna add a regular half double. Chain one and turn. And to start this next row, since we're working on the outside portion of our panel, I don't need to start with a decrease. And just like I showed you with that very first row, I'm gonna work the row like normal until I get two stitches away where I'll add my decrease. my two stitches left again I'm gonna yarn over and add my decrease so go into that front loop once and into that next front loop again yarn over and pull through two and then yarn over and pull through all three and that's how we end that row and like I said earlier from my sweater I'm gonna add a total of eight rows of those decreases and after I add those eight rows of decreases, I'm gonna work like normal for another eight rows. And now that I have my front panel finished, I need to start working on my back panel, which is a little bit different. So I'm gonna crochet another matching ribbed band and crochet like normal for about 94 rows. And here I have my back panel all completed. I'm gonna create a much more shallow neckline for my back. I'm only gonna work for 32 stitches where I'll stop and turn around. So I'll start here by slip stitching and adding my half double. Slip stitch again and add another half double. And continue that pattern for 32 stitches. Here's my 30th stitch, 31, and 32. And I'm going to end with a regular half double. From this point, I'm gonna chain one and turn my work, and this will be the start of my neckline. And I'm just gonna to continue to add a total of eight rows of the 32 stitches without any decreases. And after I finish these eight rows, I'm gonna mimic the same exact thing of the 32 stitches on the other side to create an even neckline. So now that I have my front and my back panel finally completed, I'm gonna insert a few photos with some measurements. That way you guys can see how it looks with the completed neckline. I need to crochet two matching ribbed cuffs. So to start the cuffs, I'm gonna create my slip knot. And for the cuffs, I'm gonna chain seven plus one for turning. So here's my seven plus one. And skipping that first stitch, I'm gonna add a row of single crochet. After my very last stitch, I'm gonna chain one and turn. 
And repeating the same pattern as I did before, I'm gonna add a row of front post stitches. Picking up my very last stitch. I'm gonna chain one and turn. To finish the ribbed cuff, I'm gonna repeat the pattern of front post stitches for 36 rows. And don't forget that you'll wanna make two matching cuffs for your sleeves. And here at the very end of my 36th row, I'm gonna finish up my single crochet and chain one. And now we're gonna start working horizontally again. So I'm gonna start here at my corner and make my way across with single crochets into each gap. And at the end of my row, chain one and turn. And for this next row, I'm gonna add a little bit of an increase just to make sure that the sleeve isn't too tight on the arm. So the pattern for this next row is gonna be one single crochet into the first loop and then two single crochet into the next. So to start this row, I'm gonna add one single crochet into my first loop and then two single crochet into the next. So here's one and back into that same loop. I'm gonna add a second. Repeating that again, one single crochet into the next loop and then two into the next. So that's one, back into this loop for two. And just continue this for the whole row. So that's one, and there's my two. I'm gonna chain one and turn. And keeping with the same exact pattern that we did for the front and back panels, I'm gonna alternate between adding a slip stitch and a half double crochet. So here at my first loop, I'm gonna slip stitch. And into my next, add a half double crochet. Again, slip stitch. And then a half double crochet. So at this point, I'm pretty much repeating the same exact steps that I used for the front and back body pieces. And now I'm just gonna continue with the same exact pattern until I have about 80 rows of stitches or until the sleeve is about 19 inches in length, including the cuff. So now that I have my four panels finally completed, I'm gonna start by sewing up my shoulder seams. 